Hi, I'm Petra Lewis, and this is Ultrasound 101. And this is part two, very basic buttonology. Even the most basic ultrasound user needs to know how to operate certain buttons on the ultrasound scanner. And these include settings for the applications, being able to set the depth, the focal zone, the gain, and the ability to save cine images. Each ultrasound vendor has uh, specific machine-dependent application settings, and these are settings that you call up within the software itself, and it'll say something like renal ultrasound or pelvic ultrasound or um, uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound, and they are settings that affect the depth of the penetration beam, the frequency, the contrast, what labels will be available, what type of measurements will be available that are designed for that specific application. Um, these are the so-called optimal settings, but you can also alter them once you've called up that software. So you go into the program and you just select it for the appropriate application. I'm not going to show it to you here because it's going to differ from machine to machine, but typical ones might be general abdomen, pediatric abdomen, gynecology, obstetrics, and so on. So start there by calling up your application software setting. The next button you need to find is the depth button. You'll need to set the depth variably during the period of the examination so you can see as much as you need, but not too much. Your number of pixels in your image is set. So if you're wasting those pixels by viewing way too deep, you know, through the patient into the bed the other side, when you only need to concentrate them on a very small um, area, you're going to have decreased resolution. For example, if you think about optics with a camera, if you're looking at an entire field of flowers, you're going to have a big depth of view. But if you only want to have very high resolution blown up image in one single flower, then you're going to have a much shorter um, depth of field of view so that you can concentrate all your pixels on that one image. The depth of your field of view is going to be shown on the numbers on the bar that's usually on the right side of the image. In this case, the field of view is 14, and each of these little things, the little markers here, are one centimeter. Because here we want to get an image of the entire liver, so we need a, a large depth or large field of view. Here on the right, we're just looking at the gallbladder, and that's a more superficial organ. We've also got a little fluid here. So we want a much uh, smaller depth, in this case, five centimeters. And in this case, each of the tick marks is half a centimeter. So keep an eye on that. And you may need to alter this um, dynamically through the examination as you move from imaging one part of an organ to another. A third button is the focal zone. And you want to alter this focal zone so you, uh, you place it at the point that you want to have the best resolution. So in this image on the left, we're wanting to look at the kidney. So the focal zone, which is usually shown by um, a little arrow or a little triangle um, along the depth gauge here on the right, we can see that that is set right at the level of the kidney. This has an 11 centimeter field of view. The middle image has a nine centimeter field of view. And in this case, our focal zone has been moved up a little bit here. But again, it's right at the kidney, which is where we want to see it. And it doesn't mean that you can't see stuff outside of that focal zone. That's just sort of the, the point, the sweet point, if you like, of the highest resolution. Up in this image on the right, although it also has a field of view of nine centimeters, we're really wanting to look at the gallbladder in these particular images. And so our focal zone has been moved all the way up here. So it's at the same level as the gallbladder. So set the depth and then set the focal zone. And again, you will have to change this during the period of the examination. Modern machine settings do a pretty good job of setting the gain appropriately, um, but you may need to twiddle this a bit. So for gain, think about volume or brightness of the image. As you change the overall gain, and there's a button that will specifically say gain, or it might say 2D on it, and you just turn it, you are turning up and down that volume or up and down that brightness. And I'll show you the effect of that in a minute. Time gain compensation is you're altering the gain at different depths through the image. Again, I'll show you this in a minute. So this is kind of, think about more like altering the treble versus the bass rather than turning up the overall volume. 
So let's see the effect of changing gain settings. This image on the left, the gain is too low. So the volume is down too low or the brightness is too low. And what you're going to do here is you're going to make uh, tissues that are not anechoic look like they're anechoic. So you're going to think that solid masses are cysts and so on. In the middle image, the gain has been turned up too high. Things are too bright. The volume set too high here. And in here, things that should be anechoic, should not have echoes in, are going to look like they have echoes in. So you're going to think that a cyst is a solid mass. And then as with Goldilocks, this one on the right is just right. It's at the optimal gain setting. And generally speaking, you'll want uh, solid tissues such as muscle or um, liver to be in the mid gray kind of color shade um, when it's correctly set. So play around with your gain on a solid organ till it's right and then everything else you'll be able to see relative to it. So just to reiterate, if the gain's too high, anechoic structures will have echoes in them. If it's too low, solid structures may look anechoic. Generally speaking, you shouldn't need to play with the TGC or the time gain compensation. But if you have an image like this on the right, where the liver should be a homogeneous shade of gray throughout, but you can see it's much darker here in the near field than in the far field here, then you may need to play with the TGC. And this usually appears as a panel of parallel buttons somewhere um, on the key adjacent to the keyboard. And by moving these individual buttons, they will correspond to the near field and then the bottom buttons to the far field, and you can move these and adjust the brightness so that you can equal this out throughout. Um, as I say, don't often need to play with this, but if you have an image that looks like this one here, you need to play with your TGC. On the machine you're using, you need to find the button that allow you to freeze an image and then save or record an image in whatever type of medium that you are attached to, whether it's your recording onto the device itself or you're recording onto the web or a PAC system. But also you want to find what button allows you to take Cine images. And these are going to be obviously machine dependent. Um, so I'm not gonna show you uh, where it is on my particular machine. So when you record a similar image, it's going to be extremely useful in two circumstances. One is enabling you to take a sweep through an organ. So you can image the entire organ, usually in a couple of different planes. So say transaxion longitudinal. You can then go back over it later and have a look and see if there's anything that you missed during the live examination. It also allows your supervisor to be able to look at your images, even if they weren't there at the time of image acquisition. And then finally, they're going to be extremely vital for looking at moving structures. So anything like an echocardiogram, or in this case, little embryos in the uterus where you want to see their um, heart motion and record their heart rate, you need to have CINE images. So find where that, is, where that button is on your machine. And that's the end of the basic buttonology section.